In this video I want to show you how to embed a 4000 mAh battery into any smartphone. You probably wonder, why would somebody do such a thing? Here is a specific example. I have this smartphone, I also have the original battery, but the original one is inflated. Uh, realistically, I have no need for this phone, so I don't intend to buy a new battery. And it is possible that the battery for this model is no longer available on the market. So it's a win-win. The phone has some interesting specifications. 8 core, 1.4 GHz, 1 GB RAM, 16 GB internal memory, HD display, 30 MP main camera, 2 MP selfie camera. The original battery was 1750 mAh. It runs uh, Android 4.4 and it's a dual SIM phone. Therefore, it represents the ideal guinea pig for this project. The battery I intend to use is from an old tablet, it's 4000 mAh and it stands about 4-5 to five years on my shelf and collects dust. The first thing I will do is to remove the battery cover. And the first problem as you can see is that the battery I plan to install cannot fit in its intended position. Well, for the original battery. <laughs> But we'll solve that problem later as well. Before I continue, I want to draw your attention that it is very important to handle batteries carefully and that if you improperly handle or damage the battery, it can damage not only your health but your finances too. Please, if you don't know what you are doing, don't do it. If you do decide to handle the batteries yourself, be sure to use protective equipment. The next step is to peel off the sticker or I will call it label of the original battery. Now that I've peeled off the label I want to take off this plastic hat that contains the battery contacts. To separate it from the battery I use a plastic disassembly tool. It is most important to be careful, especially if you are working with metal tool. You must be careful not to short the positive and the negative poles below the plastic hatch. I hope I don't have to explain why. But if, if you think I should explain it, please leave that in the comments section. I will hereafter refer to the plastic hood as the contacts plate. Because the battery contacts are on the contacts plate. Does that make any sense? I think so. Most contacts plates have much more to it than just contacts. There can be other electronic components too. For example, temperature sensor, electric flow meter, charge cycle counter and so on and so forth. Contact plates are usually only glued with double-sided adhesive and do not require much force to peel off, usually. The positive and negative pole of the battery is in most cases connected by flat conductors to the contact plate. And the negative pad is usually longer than the positive, or the other way around, so... I will cut the negative first, then I cut the positive one. It is very important to confirm which contact on the battery itself is a positive and which one is the negative one. The best way to confirm this is with a measuring instrument. And remember this, I mean the poles. Or if your smart one, write it down. Now that the new battery was collecting dust on my shelf for many years and was not charged during this period, we can be 100% sure that it is empty. And it is empty to the point that it will most probably not start charging with a mobile phone charger. And we can surely say that it is necessary to revive the battery with a higher power. <laughs> if you don't know how to revive a dead battery, watch the, the video on this channel. I will put uh, the link in the description of this video. But just in case, here in short. I'm using a 9 volt, 2 amp power adapter. Plug it in, then take the positive output of the adapter and connect it to the positive pole of the measuring instrument. 
same goes with the negative output of the adapter. I take the negative output of the adapter and connect it to the negative pole of the measuring instrument. Now I connect it all together to the battery. Positive pole to positive and negative pole to negative. So now we have a live view how the battery comes to life. 10 minutes later we have some 3.6 volt and as you see I put some clamps on to hold the wires. <laughs> Next is to prepare the wires by which I will solder the new battery to the contacts plate. I thin the tops with a soldering iron and thin wire. Now it's time to start soldering the new battery to the contacts plate. Now we need that very important information and that is where we determine the positive and negative poles of the old battery. Because if we know where the poles were before, so we will know where to solder the positive and negative pole now. Now that I have soldered the contact plate, let's check again with the measuring instrument. Everything seems okay. I can go to the first test. It recognized the battery well, but it see, sees it as empty, which it probably is. I am connecting the charger and I am waiting. Nice, 22% and empty. Hmm, seems legit. Now I am waiting for it to boot up. And voila! It works on the charger. The first test seems promising. But let's prepare the device to be a little more usable. Next is to find something the approximate dimensions to the original battery. And I found an old Nokia BP4L battery and I remove the bottom plastic cap. And now you will see why. <laughs> so I need a placeholder and a contact plate holder. Do not panic, I will print this on a 3D printer, cut it maybe on a CNC machine or cut it by hand from a piece of wood. But until then the BP4L will have to do it. Now let's figure out how to put this battery in place. Since the battery cannot fit inside the enclosure, we will install it from the outside. To do this we need to drill holes in the battery cover. It is now necessary to desolder the previously soldered wires in order to slip them through the punched holes and solder them again. Now I gently squeeze the wires inside the battery housing from the contact plate of the battery lids so that they do not break when I attach the battery cover. And as you can see on the battery, they are already existing double sided adhesive. Just push the battery to the cover and voila, battery is attached. Now once again to try everything briefly. And it's time to put the device to charge. As you can see, in 7 hours it filled 4300 mAh. Why it charged to 4300 
when its capacity is 4000 at the moment I'm not sure there may be no overcharge protection or the battery may have a larger capacity than it is declared and possibly this measuring device is defective but we'll find out I'm not going to break my head much now about this and 10 days later as I was shooting this video I expected the battery to last maybe 2 to 4 days that it will last 11 days 17 and something hours and still have 9% capacity I did not expect to clarify something, I did not use the phone actively all the time. It was worn, it was connected to Wi-Fi all the time, there were two SIM cards in it all the time, but it was not used as my primary phone. And with this I will end this video. There will be definitely a sequel. I'll make a few more pieces and run some detailed tests, so click subscribe. Click the little bell to get notified when the new video is released. You can also follow Hepic on other social networks, links in the description of this video. And if you enjoyed the video, like it, if you didn't, do not. If you have questions, leave them in the comments section. Thanks for watching, until the next video, bye.